Welcome to Bible Track Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracks, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. What a delight it is to be with you here once again at Bible Tract Echoes. Thanks for joining us, and I mean that in a very particular way. If this happens to be your very first time to be tuning into the broadcast, thank you so much. We do some studying of the Word of God here, and right now my Bible is sitting open to 2 Peter chapter 2. 2 Peter 2, if you can at all, reach over, get your own copy of the Word of God, and join me there. 2 Peter chapter 2, I'm going to begin to read at verse 13 here in just a moment. Now, as we go through our time today, I will be encouraging you to get a free sample packet of our gospel tracts from us. My announcer is going to give you three different ways by which you can give to us your name and your mailing address. He'll do that at the end. So have pen and paper ready and jot down the contact method that works best for you. I'm going to highlight one of the gospel tracts in a moment, but right now I want to lead into our Bible study time this way. In recent years, the word profiling has been heard on the news a few times. Often it's heard in this kind of a way that the police were accused of racial profiling. Well, has racial profiling ever happened in our country? And the answer is absolutely it has. Was it done by all police officers? Absolutely not, but it was done. But let me change the story a little bit. If a series of home robberies happened in your neighborhood and a bright red car was seen in the area at the time of each robbery, then should the police be looking for red cars rather than blue ones? Well, absolutely. That's a form of profiling that in this case was done correctly. Well, here in 2 Peter 2, the Holy Spirit is giving us a list of qualities about the way false teachers live. He does so so that you and I can spot those living their lives in these kind of qualities. Now, we expect unsaved people to live like the way this list says, but we don't expect believers to do this. Should we ever spot those in our church assemblies who fit this profile, then we had better have our guard up and to be absolutely sure we dare not let them do any teaching. So get your Bible, get something on which you can jot some notes, and let's continue our profile list about false teachers. Now, before I begin to read in uh, 2 Peter 2, here is a gospel tract, one of the tracts I mentioned a moment ago. Now, that word tract is spelled T-R-A-C-T. I'm referring to an evangelism tool. A gospel tract is a short, written presentation of God's plan of salvation. There is only one plan. We have, though, over 40 tracts. What each tract does, it comes at the gospel from a little different vantage point. The tract in my hand right now is entitled, We Are Grateful. We're Grateful. It's written to present the gospel to those that are veterans or those that are presently in the military. We're saying we're grateful for your service. Let me read you part of what the track says. It says this, Have you ever wondered that if it's true that a good and faithful service man or service woman who dies for our country is assured of an escape from hell and entrance in eternity in heaven? It asks that question. Now, my friend, that has been said over the process of decades, but is it true? The answer is no. This track goes on and lays out the fact that we are grateful for people who have served, whether they died in service, were wounded in service, or never saw combat. We're grateful for people who served and protect our freedoms, but giving your life for your country does not remove the sin stain from your soul. This is a great gospel tool written for that slice of people who have served in the military. Just one of the over 40 English tracks in the sample packet. Would you please let me send it to you? 
Now be ready when my announcer gives the contact information. If you cannot stay to the end, just go to our website, which is www.bibletracksinc.org. Get the tracks. We want to be a partner with you in the gospel. If your Bible is open to 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 13 begins this way. Speaking of false teachers, and shall receive the reward of unrighteousness as they that count it pleasure to riot in the daytime. Spots they are in blemishes, sporting themselves with their own deceivings while they feast with you, having eyes full of adultery and that cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls, and heart they have exercised with covetous practices, cursed children, meaning they're living under a curse. Go to verse 17. These, these false teachers, are wells without water, clouds that are carried with a tempest, to whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever. Stop, please, right there. Second Peter 2 is all about false teachers, and I've used the word apostates to label them. These are teachers that, yes, are teaching error, but they had God's truth taught to them, but they have turned from it. They've rejected it. On Monday of this week, I began using a series of words, all beginning with the letters U-N, to describe the way that these apostates live. These words identify the characteristics, the profile of uh, the personal lives of the false teachers. And as the Spirit of God moves on Peter to write this little short book, Peter is a very old man, and his death is soon to come. So Peter warns the first century believing church and all believing churches of every era, because we have it written down here, he warns us to beware of false teachers. And to help us spot them, Peter gives us these qualities, seven of them, I'm picked up on here of how these false teachers live. I have three more un words, U-N words today. Here's my next one based upon the second half of verse 13. The word is unhealthy. Now, the second half of verse 13 says this, and I'm reading, spots they are and blemishes sporting, or that means reveling themselves with their own deceivings while they feast with you. Now, those words, spots and blemishes, are words that were used in that era of disgraced people. They're disgraced because their bodies had blotches on them due to a disease. People who saw these folk and these blotches would stay away because they did not want to be contaminated by the disease. So, they are unhealthy. The teachers are unhealthy spiritually. But verse 13 ends by saying that these false teachers are being welcomed to the fellowship dinners held by the local churches. Ladies and gentlemen, the Word of God says that we have no fellowship with these kinds of teachers. We identify them and we put them away. My next unword is the word unconforming based upon verse 15. Verse 15 says that these apostates have, I'm reading now, forsaken the right way. Rather than making their lives and their teachings to conform to Bible truth, these teachers have forsaken, or the word means abandoned. They have abandoned truth. Verse 15 says they did so in part due to the allurement of financial gain. And verse 15 calls it the wages of unrighteousness. And then the verse likens these teachers to that Old Testament false prophet named Balaam. Now, I'm going to come back, Lord willing, to Balaam's story next week. Since God uses him as an illustration, let's deal with him, but that'll be next week. My final unword is the word uncomforting. Uncomforting based upon verse 17. Verse 17 says, these, these false teachers are wells without water, clouds that are carried with a tempest, to whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever. Now, beloved, these false teachers are likened to dry wells and dry clouds. Just as a thirsty person or just as a farmer with a thirsty field gets excited when they spot a well or see rain clouds, so people, I'm talking about 
you and I, people around us with souls thirsty for God and thirsty for forgiveness and thirsty for eternal peace in their soul with God, these people go, these thirsty souls go to the religious teachers, but the teachers are empty of help. They offer no comfort for their sin-sick souls of the people. And why? Because these teachers have abandoned truth, so they have no hope and they have no way to satisfy the souls of others. Verse 17 ends with a, another statement about the judgment that's awaiting these false teachers, these apostates. The verse says this, and I'm reading again, to whom, speaking of the false teachers, to whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever. The mist of darkness. Now, this darkness here is described by our English word mist. What's being described here is the hell of eternal judgment. It's a place of darkness, a place shrouded in darkness and obscurity. Jesus himself refers to hell as a place of outer darkness. Then Jesus adds words about this place that says, he says it's a place of weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. Those are terms of anguish and torment. Here, in verse 17, the Holy Spirit limits his emphasis to the fact that hell is a place of no comfort, a place of darkness, of doom, of despair. Oh, listening friend, whether I use the English word hell or use the phrase lake of fire, both are biblical, but I'm referring to the same place. It's the place where God sends people, sinners, who will not receive his son Jesus Christ as their savior. It's an awful place. It is an eternal place. It's a place from which is no escape. Beloved, don't go there. That's why Jesus gave us his word to steer us away from hell, a steer us away from the lake of fire. But even more critical, that's why God himself came to earth, took on flesh and dwelt among us. I'm speaking of Jesus, the Christ, the Son of God. He said, I and the Father are one. He identifies who he is. He's the eternal creator God. But he took on flesh so that he could die for sinners. All are sinners. All have fallen short of the glory of God. And the wages of our sin is death. We will be cast into the lake of fire, this place of darkness, the mist of darkness. But we don't have to go there because God so loved you and me that he gave us his only begotten son, that whosoever, anybody who believes in Jesus Christ shall not perish, but have everlasting life. If you've never received Christ as Savior, don't go to the place of mist, the mist of darkness. Receive Christ. Be saved from your sin. Let him give you everlasting life right now. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.